People's Climate March is this Saturday in Washington, D.C. If it's anything like its 2014 predecessor in New York City, there will probably be over 400,000 people lining the streets. The 2014 Climate March showed the world that people still very much care about environmental issues and are committed to climate action that frontlines marginalized communities. A brief look at the history of environmental demonstrations will illuminate why this 2017 People's Climate March and its 2014 New York City counterpart points towards a hopeful future for progressive climate action. So let's go back to the spring of 1970, the first Earth Day to be exact, at a time when anti-war and civil rights protests were dominating the nation's attention. Gaylord Nelson, a senator from Wisconsin, organized a massive nationwide environmental teaching. The first Earth Day is important because it motivated millions of people across the United States and the world with a series of grassroots teachings and demonstrations. But unlike contemporary movements like the People's Climate March, the organizers of the first Earth Day obscured racial and class divisions in order to make environmentalism approachable for white middle and upper class audiences. For example, at the University of Michigan's five-day teaching, environmental historian Adam Rome writes, the campus black power organization threatened a boycott because the organizers were not devoting enough attention to the problems of the ghetto, while members of the Students for a Democratic Society mocked the not-so-liberal liberalism of the feature speakers. Despite this lack of intersectional organizing, the first Earth Day inspired a whole generation of environmental activists and led to roughly 2 million new memberships for mainstream environmental organizations in the 15 years after 1970. But as crucial as the first Earth Day was in galvanizing contemporary environmental movements, the participants largely saw themselves as separate from the concerns of the civil rights, anti-war, and women's liberation movements. This, however, eventually changed with the smaller environmental initiatives of the 1980s and 90s. In these years, the environmental movement began to splinter as a result of the more corporate-centered outlook of larger environmental organizations. A 1990 study even revealed executives from Exxon, Monsanto, and Union Carbide on the boards of seven major environmental groups. While these bigger organizations became quagmired in corporate concerns, and annual Earth Day events turned into what Fortune magazine called a veritable biz fest, smaller environmental groups began to take a more local and democratized approach to environmental activism. Some groups, like the Indigenous Environmental Network, took into account marginalized communities and the idea of environmental justice, while others, like Earth First, employed eco-sabotage to hinder environmental degradation. So as corporate activism began to affect the actions of mainstream organizations and events like Earth Day, a new generation of grassroots environmentalists emerged and carved out a more progressive agenda, one that sought to address the concerns of people other than the predominantly white men that ran the larger nonprofits. If we jump ahead to the founding of the People's Climate Movement in 2014 and the subsequent marches it organized, the legacy of these progressive grassroots environmentalists lives on. While the first Earth Day generated an initial push for environmental action, the goals of the People's climate movement demonstrate how environmentalism has developed since the 1970s. The People's Climate Movement uses a decentralized structure with an emphasis on local organization and prioritizing leadership of frontline communities, communities of color, and low-income communities. People's Climate March tomorrow marks an important step towards the future of progressive climate action, a future which recognizes the success of the mass grassroots demonstrations of the first Earth Day, while also understanding the importance of leadership from frontline communities and those often marginalized by mainstream environmentalism. In this way, the People's Climate Movement and the marches it has organized demonstrate that the global community not only cares about individual solutions to environmental issues like climate change, but also solutions on a systemic level. I've put some links down in the description if you're interested in going to the climate march and hopefully you are. And as always, if you like the video, please consider subscribing or supporting me financially on Patreon. And I will see you next week. Bye.